So you've probably seen these big clocks on Pinterest or just Google, something like that. Uh, today I want to show you how you can make one of these clocks yourself. Starshine lights my way to bed Magic rainbows glisten in my head Just like a child I live in wonderland The first thing we did was to pick up this electric spool. This one costs around five, five, six dollars. We took the spool apart and we power washed it really well uh, just to make sure no dirt or rocks or anything like that are is in it. And this is what it looked like after we power washed it. So it's very, very rough. We used the belt sander for the really rough parts before we started sanding it with the orbital sander. So that got rid of the belt sanders, um, the marks and the streaks, things like that. Made sure it was good and smooth. And this is the metal piece that goes that's inside the middle. And so we welded. Uh, another metal piece to that and this is how it that turned out and this is how our first uh, clock turned out um, we made actually made two of them so here we are starting on the second one I painted it white and now I'm distressing it with the just part of the belt sander I'm measuring uh, a place for the words that we are going to add to to this clock and right here I am putting the words onto the clock and this is a trick that I have it's called a hinge method for these stencils it's a vinyl stencil and you just taped it down right in the middle there's transfer paper on top transfer tape on top you unroll that transfer tape and you see the stencils pop has come up with it tear off the backing of the stencil or cut it and then you just lay it down flat and that will hold that stencil um, so you can pull off that tape and then you just lay the, the rest of it flat and notice there's no stencil coming up with it and that's it that's how I get it straight make sure that it's straight before I do anything um, now I am taking the transfer tape off of the stencil. Um, sometimes you have to work with it and just roll it from the, the top going down or the side. Just don't go straight up because you'll take the whole stencil with you. And I'm going to do that for both, both words. And I'm going to paint them when I'm done. And make sure that they are nice and flat before you paint them because if you don't then you'll get some paint uh, seeping in it'll bleed through uh, so I just make sure before I do anything else I make sure that everything's all nice and flat you can use a credit card or or some kind of um, this is something that I had to make sure everything's flat you can use your fingers uh, just make sure everything's all nice and flat and now I'm just taping it off make to so I won't get any paint on my white surface of my my clock that I don't want to get paint on. So I'm going to do that for both sides, the top and the bottom. And I really like this this big uh, the thick tape or the wide tape. It covers a lot more surface. And when I paint I just get a light, very, very light coating of paint on here. I don't put a lot on here. Uh, just so, because it's it's better to have two or three coats of a really light paint than to just um, put a bunch of paint on your brush and try to paint through. And I make sure just to dab the paint on there. I have this going in kind of a fast speed. So, but um, yeah, two or three coats of paint that'll make sure that um, there's no bleed through and uh, like I said I just just a little bit of paint and I start off at the edge before I even get onto my letters so that way I know most of the paint is gone off the brush before I, I paint on there I dab and you don't want to just brush the paint on there you just dab it on there to make sure that you get no bleed through 
you can get nice crisp lines. Okay, I waited for a few hours to make sure everything's dry. I put a couple coats on there and I'm taking the stencil off now and um, to reveal the hopefully it's nice and crisp on the inside the, the lines. And it's the same way. You just kind of start off at the edge and kind of go down so that way you don't want to be peeling it up straight up because everything will the, the everything the paint and everything will come up too. And I just get some tweezers usually with this. Uh, right now I'm just having my fingers, but uh, you don't want to dig too too deep with tweezers if you can avoid the tweezers as much as possible because sometimes it just leaves little dig marks on there. So I try to get as much off as I can with my fingers before I go to the tweezers. And uh, But it works really well, the tweezers do too. Okay, and that's what it looks like after I have taken everything off, all the stencil, and it's been painted. So we're working on putting the, the clock hands on there. We drilled a hole in the center of our metal piece. And this is the trick for getting the numbers nice and straight and the exact way that you want to with your clock. First, you, do, you tape the 12 o'clock. Make sure both hands are straight up 12 o'clock. You twirl it or twirl around the, the big hand. And then if you notice, the small hand um, goes, it points to the 1 o'clock. That's where you want, to you want your 1 o'clock position to be. You tape that down, just like I showed you with the, the hinge method. And that way you can, it's, it holds them there and you can make sure that you can use that to to paint those those letters or the numbers I'm sorry just go all the way around until you get to your 12 o'clock position again just keep going all the way and do it one more time and then I'll go to the very end See, it goes straight to the, where you want it to be positioned, and it's just my little trick to, to getting the numbers nice and even to where you need them to be. And that's it. That's how you have perfectly even numbers for your clock. And you can do this with any size clock. It does not have to be a big clock or anything like that. So. Um, and then I just use that same hinge method for my numbers. I just kind of tore off and I taped off all the numbers. I went around and painted, painted them all black. So here I'm just taping off those numbers. Um, just to make sure there's no paint that gets through to the, the white that I don't want for the because sometimes, you know, uh, with that paint, it can get a little uh, little messy. So you just want to make sure everything's better safe than sorry. And just make sure you tape all those off really good. And then I did the same thing with the numbers. I just kind of made sure my brush was good and dry with just a little bit of paint. I did two or three coats on each number. So it kind of takes a while, but you just have to just keep going and... Um, like I said, it, I did two or three coats, so it took me a few hours to get everything done uh, to where I wanted them to be. And this is what it looks like after it's all done, before I put the clear coat on there, and uh, all the letters are on there, numbers. And for the clear coat, I just I left the hands on there, I just made sure I didn't spray the hands at the clock because you don't want to get those sticky. And that's it. Not too bad. There's uh, some welding work that we had done. Um, so that would be a little bit harder if you don't know anybody that welds. But you can also get some vinyl or cardboard or something, paint that black and put it there. You can 
uh, glue it or a lot of these don't have this metal piece to where you would need to do that with so it just depends on which one that you find um, a lot of them are either closed up or just have a really small hole to where you can work with that easier it just happens to be the one the cable spool that we had had these big uh, holds with the metal piece inside it so my, we own a welder so my husband just decided to weld that on but if you have any questions just let us know and put a comment um, down below and we'll be glad to answer those for you don't forget to um, hit that subscribe button like this video and um, if you want to be the first to be notified of more videos from us uh, click that bell as well so thanks we'll see you next week